now we're going to jump over to the moon. I don't know what this order is coming from, but we're going to jump on over to the moon. Um, there, ha there aren't that many planetary transits this week other than Venus moving into Pisces and Mercury moving into Aquarius. So that's really interesting. I guess I'll do them next. <clears throat> okay, so the moon. Uh, so the moon moves into uh, Aries uh, today, um, February 1st, Saturday, February 1st. Then into Taurus on February 2nd at um, 1624 Central. Then into Gemini, Federal Gemini on February 5th at 1447 Central. And then the moon moves into Sidereal Cancer on February 7th at 2.17 p.m. Central. And then Leo on February 8th. So the new moon, well, the phases of the moon other than the full moon is represented by this tone. The tone for Shasheta and this system. So while we're going to get the moon, and then as it transits through these five constellations in seven days. So we have Duaset, Duahete, Duajahute, Dua Shasheta, and Dua Ra. So this is a cycle or a pattern that repeats every moon, every 28 days. I, I'm only going, you know, seven days at a time. Um, and since I'm only doing this report once a week, I'm just going to cover the moon as it goes through these constellations. So do a set or Mars represents the ego personality. And since we're focusing on our, our enlightenment, we're focusing on the aspect of Set after he has conquered his own lower nature and become the, um, the, the, the captain of the boat of Ra. Hetaru, the goddess of love and beauty, connected to Apis, Sidereal Taurus. She's considered the most powerful goddess because she was able to, um, same thing, conquer her lower ego. She had gotten herself in a position where she had forgotten her divinity. And through the teachings of the cosmic mind, she was able to remember who she was and reclaim her position as a daughter of Ra. Shahuti is the cosmic mind or the divine intellect. And um, well, from the principle of mentalism, we know that mind is all that all begins in the mind. And that Shahuti represents the cosmic mind of Ra. But mind is not, is not the goal. The mind is a reflection of our creativity and what else do they say you can't think your way to behest you can't think your way to enlightenment so we're going to learn how to use our mind as a tool and not let it be overcome overtaken by thoughts that don't serve us now how are we going to do this the moon represents the personality and our character and one way we can get to know ourselves better is through writing in the journal. And so what I like to do is <clears throat> when the moon is in a particular sign, that's what I focus my journal writing on. And so um, Shashetta is the goddess of writing. Um, she's called the cosmic scribe. She keeps track of all the teachings of Lord Jehudi. She keeps track of our thoughts, basically. And so she's the goddess of uh, mathematics, astrology, astronomy, geometry, sacred geometry, engineering, architecture, 
record keeping, filing, uh, reckoner of time. Just got a lot of powerful uh, characteristics. And then, of course, when the sun, uh, when the moon moves into Leo, we can do our writing about our create our creative efforts, our creative um, projects. Maybe it's a time to plan them out or. Like if you're a songwriter, get all your lyrics together. <laughs> but um, it's gonna be fun to to follow the sequence, you know, um, every strength rather than just individually. So I'm enjoying this. All right. So when the moon is in each one of these constellations, that's a good time to write about conquering our ego or appreciating and seeing the beauty in all things, the gift in all adversity. It's a good time to work on our abundance. When the moon's in Mercury, it's a good time. I mean, in Gemini, it's a good time to write about, you know, our thoughts, changing our thoughts, maybe um, learning some new affirmations or new chants. Something, you know, with the, the word, spoken word, and um, affecting our thoughts. Um, maybe when the moon is in the new um, sign of cancer, this ideal cancer, that's Kepita, the time to write about um, transformations that we want to see happen, that you want to bring into manifestation. And then again, when it's in the sun, it's time to get our, maybe it's time to clean up your studio or reorganize it or um, something about writing and creating with sacred geometry. Use a shadow. 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 Do us 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 a
know, I've been thinking um, about, well, also um, Sega Jai's mentioned to me that it would be good to know what did the ancient, ancient Nectarians, how did they use astrology? How did they use the astronomy? That it may not be the way that the Greeks or the Romans used it. And I've been thinking a lot about how the zodiacs represent different aspects of our personality, of our character. And uh, like this is the first time I've played so many uh, at one time, not representing different alignments or conjunctions, but just the patterns of the moon, the, the energies that the moon is moving through in the strength. So I'm really enjoying the series. Yeah. One thing I forgot to mention about the moon is um, we're in the time of the first quarter moon. So um, next week, it'll be the full moon. 